think about the world of high fashion and the runways of New York, Paris, and Milan, the first thing that comes to mind probably isn't <laughs> mushrooms. But the humble fungi is taking fashion by storm. Adidas, Stella McCartney, Lululemon, even fancy French brands like Hermes are all experimenting with a new form of vegan leather made from mushroom roots. So if you think about leather, it's about a two year, three year process from end to end, from a cow being born to a product being made. Uh, with Milo, it's about eight weeks. At Bolt Threads in California, they're using mycelium, the fibrous root structure of mushrooms, to create animal-free leather called Milo. We're pushing 5,000 failed experiments at this point, uh, but we eventually found a way to make something that has the soft, supple, durable feel of leather and really uh, is going to delight customers and designers. The mushrooms are grown in the dark in giant bags of sawdust and go from spores to shrooms in about a week. Then they're transformed into sheets of fabric using green chemistry principles. The result, enough to impress Vogue sustainability editor Emily Chan. It's probably the closest material that we've seen that can really kind of replicate the luxurious feel of leather. And that's good news because mushrooms, unlike, say, cows, are really easy to grow. They're nature's recyclers feeding off decay and need very few resources to thrive. Mushrooms are everywhere you look in nature. They thrive in some of the most inhospitable places. The idea behind something like Milo leather is to take this and turn it into a product that looks, feels, and frankly, smells a lot like regular leather. Adidas is remaking their iconic Stan Smith sneaker in Milo leather. If I'm buying shoes, am I gonna notice, whoa, this does not feel right? The, the material is really supple to touch. It's extremely durable, and it's been developed in a way that will have similar longevity to leather. Hermes, the maker of the iconic Birkin bag, is planning a mycelium leather version of its Victoria shopper. And the biofabric revolution isn't limited to mushrooms. Companies around the globe are using algae, pineapple, nettles, even spider webs to craft the sustainable threads of the future. At the moment, you know, around 60% of um, our textiles are made of polyester. They also release really harmful microplastics when washed into the oceans. So it's really crucial that we look at a more sustainable way of making our clothing. That said, biofabrics, including Milo, are not a silver bullet for sustainability. While many use fewer resources than synthetics, most aren't 100% carbon neutral, and they're just one piece of a bigger puzzle. It's really important that brands actually tackle the root causes of the problems, for example, cutting CO2 emissions, um, tackling issues like overproduction. So it's not the whole solution, and it can't be seen as the whole solution. Still, biofabrics are having a moment, and as consumer demand for earth-friendly design increases, mushrooms just might be the future of fashion. And guys, it is not just mushrooms. There's actually a company that is making shirts out of algae and they are fully compostable and biodegradable. So you never have to throw them away, hmm. guys. Or you get stuck in the rain and that can lead to other issues. Um, Sarah, when will some of these items actually be on the shelves? <laughs> So I, I asked Adidas when we can expect to see these Milo Leather Stan Smiths. They didn't have an exact date, but they said probably by the end of the year. Ooh. And I also asked them, is this going to be a limited release item that has a matching price tag? And they reassured me they want these sustainable products to be accessible and not luxury. So hopefully it's something we can all afford. Aside from buying this, uh, this, this mushroom leather, Sarah, any other tips for making more sustainable fashion choices in general? Hey, Craig, I am so glad that you asked that because when we want to be more sustainable in our practices, the best thing we can do is actually buy less. Wear what you have a little bit longer. When you're done with it, give it to a friend or recycle it and be really conscious in your choices. Buying a little less is probably the easiest mm. thing that all of us can do for the environment. Less, Guys. less wow. consumption. Yeah. Mm, good advice. Good advice, Sarah. Thank you so much. Fascinating story. Yeah. And it's like that t-shirt blanket that I had made. You know, you take oh, yeah. little t-shirts mm -hmm. instead of throwing them out and buying a blanket. It's recycling. It a blanket. It's true. Those mushrooms, I remember that with those in college. But I, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't think, think those are the kind of fabrics. I was going to say, those are the kind you can turn into leather. <laughs> That's right.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.